train now because she was so excited you were doing the light on her car. I love cake. The thing is that I don't have enough room in the shop to bring a car in. And uh, so I'm just putting the body back on the GTO, and then there's all the more space to work on your car. It should only take like a few hours. It makes sense to me. It makes sense to me. Women don't get it. They don't get it. They don't so, get So this piece was rotten on our ender wheel well, but it was only this spot. You can see a little rough around the clip for the bolt there. That hole's rotten and that hole's rotten. So I made this. Basically all I do is started with the 90 here and then just laid it on top. Actually you can see these little holes here. I screwed them to the old one, trace it. I just cut it in. So that fits about as good as you can expect. Um, and when I'm done, you won't be able to tell that it's, that I did it. Now, you wonder why not just go out and buy a wheel well? Well, they're uh, $400. And that took me about 45 minutes. It took me about an hour to weld it in. Two hours. Um, and what's the point if you're just gonna be a parts replacer? Uh, I have fun doing this. This is, uh, a uh, piece of art, if you ask me, the way you bend it. And it keeps your head smart, keeps your head strong. Um, better for Alzheimer's if you keep thinking like stuff like this. If you just buy a new one and pop it in, yeah, you can do that. But I have fun doing this, so here we go. This whole bottom section here was rotten, so that's all replaced. Everything's fixed on the inside here. We got the rocker extension so now it's just a matter of covering up this piece and then doing it again on the other side so basically i just want to get it together and uh, back on the frame so that i can get some more room in the shop because now the gto is a big car and it's taking up two spots the frame and the body itself so here we go so that's one side looks pretty good there the seam wise in here this all gets covered by seam sealer uh, which runs down this corner and goes down like that. So that'll be covered up nice from the inside. It looks pretty good. Happy with that. Flash some epoxy on that with some sealer in it. So you just reduce the epoxy so it fills all the little holes. And then we can put the seam sealer on it. Now I just got to do this side. Which has a big giant gaping hole in it. So this is the front corner on the GTO. And the problem is that there's a... 90 degree bend up and then over. So the only way I know how to do that is to uh, bend up some square tubing that mimics the design exactly, or the profile exactly. You see that inside there. Now if I make two of them, bend them up and then squeeze it together, then I can tap that edge over. Let's lay the square tubing on there. Not that, that one's solid. It's just hollow, but it's also, it's an inch square tubing. And then just put that on and bend it until it's the right profile. So I gotta do it in about four or five spots all the way along until I have two matching ones. Here we go. So once we got kind of a bend there, you can see it's nicer on the inside than it is on the outside. We gotta shrink that steel. So we'll do that in our shrinker. Shouldn't be too bad. So it's starting to take shape. We can give it more of a def definite bend now, now that we've shrunk the steel quite a bit. So we'll try to get this edge a little more square. Okay, now I'm really happy with that. Nice square definition. The angle really nice. So now I can lay the bars in. I got one little wrinkle right there, but that's okay. Now I've got it C-clamped uh, this way. And because it's one inch, it was also one inch on the, uh, on the original. I can just tap it over and get that secondary lip. And I might have to stretch that later. And so on. I gotta put the camera down to get the back. There. It's a lot of work for something that nobody's ever gonna see. But oh well, here we go. That turned out really nice. Really happy with that. The uh, curve looks really good with the little lip. Um, pretty well looks factory. 
I spot welds along the side. We'll seam seal it after we epoxy seal it. And uh, the inside lip turned out really good. So now we can start doing a little bit of repair right here. And the uh, holder for the nut for the fender, fix that. I have to fix a couple, uh, one of the holders for the uh, body mount nut inside there. And some grinding on the inside and we're just about ready to put it back on the frame. So bodies torqued onto the frame, 35 foot pounds all the way around. A uh, few issues that I ran into is we bought the bolts and the mounts from the same company, but the bolts are too long. They hit the bottom of the floor here and make a little indent, so that's no good because it'll actually push the floor off of the frame, which is no good, so we got to cut them out. Just a pain in the neck. got to take the bolts out, cut the top of the bolts off, stick them back in again, pound that down. And then the rubbers for the front rad support, they're not big enough, so I had to shim the bottom of it so that this doesn't hit the frame. Now it's gonna rust and squeak and drive me nuts. We're gonna line up the doors now because we can't change anything anymore. Everything's kind of welded at the back, quarters are on. So once the doors are right, then we can start setting our gaps for the front, put the fenders and everything back on again. And then that'll be it for a little bit again until I start welding the floor and the last of the trunk, uh, the frame connectors in between, and then start getting into the roof. So I got a little bit of work here to do yet. Um, and then uh, that is it. Getting closer, here we go. So it's together once again. We've got the floors welded in now, all the corner pieces are done, and uh, it's torqued down again, 35 pounds on each of the mounts. Every mount is holding it down. So now we check our gaps again. And if you're sick about hearing me talk about gaps, well, I'm really sick about setting the gaps over and over again, but that's part of a, a, of a restoration like this. So basically we wanna put the gaps together so that they're nicely lined up without the door pins because the door pin will actually raise and lower your door to get your gaps right. But our gaps are very nice here. Um, it gets slightly tighter at the bottom than it is at the top. So I might have to make a cut here and just tap that back and, and re-weld that. Now, the thing is with this car is we sent the quarter panels out to get done because I didn't, uh, I know I don't have enough experience to put an eight foot quarter panel in and have it line up nice. So now I gotta cut into his work um, to fix this gap. So rather than me blocking the car and, and then telling him paint it and uh, him having to put his name on it, I think we'll leave it. I'll get him to actually come in, take a look at it and he might actually take over from here. I might, I might fix this gap yet, but I, I don't think I'm gonna block this car. Um, the guy who's gonna paint it is gonna take care of the bodywork because nobody wants to take over somebody else's project. So uh, basically he's done from here back anyway, and the, uh, the, the doors have been taken down to the bare steel and just epoxied and high builded. They'll have to epoxy it again, but the fenders are the original steel and this is actually still just uh, epoxied. So so um, we're getting closer, <laughs> Hoogie's getting really excited about this. Uh, the engine's in it, the wheel wells are painted, the inside of the fenders are painted, the rad support is all painted. So we finally got some color on it. Um, I'm going to finish welding all the floor braces on the bottom by spot welding it and then welding the rockers in and then we'll get the painter in, we'll make our decisions but then uh, um, strip the roof, any other small repairs here I'll still do but then it's off to paint so I'm um, very excited for this and I know Hoogie is getting uh, really excited so we should have it ready for next summer, um, yeah here we go. Hey, hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you love the channel, consider heading over to Patreon. There's a lot of stuff happening there to help support the channel. And remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich.